Hi, I'm James Shalingwa aboard the brand new World Navigator from Atlas Ocean Voyages. We're finally here uh, after more than a year of planning. We're here with Alberto Alberti, who is the president of Atlas Ocean Voyages. And we're going to talk about this wonderful new ship and the plans for the future for Atlas on Insider Travel Report. Alberto, we are finally here. We're, we're actually live. We're not on Zoom. Uh, this is amazing. You know, now that you've seen this finished product, what's your impression? What do you think? They lived up to the demands. There was a lot of demand on our ship company. There's a lot of demand on our hotel operations right. that they had to put out a piece of product that when you walked in, it had a wow factor, but it also had a comfort factor. And that's what we have here. We have a design that's designed by a new team out in Spain and Portugal, and I should say new to cruise. They've some wonderful award-winning hotels throughout Europe, and they decided to design our ship, and I have to tell you, they did a great job. You walk in, it's fabulous. We have a lot of crew here who are eager to work and produce, and they are looking for those top end, those American clients who are gonna come in and appreciate the finer things in cruising, mm -hmm. the things that will make a ocean cruise more of a comfortable and a luxurious experience. I'm happy. So when, when you finally got aboard this ship, what are the features that really stood out now that you saw it as a reality? The first element that really stood out is just the overall ambiance, the appearance, the design. We really hit it when we dis used these designers who were experienced hotel designers and they came in and they were eager to do the ship and it shows. We have color patterns, we have materials, we have furnitures that you don't always see on a cruise ship. So the first thing that hit me was the interior elegance, the interior ambiance. The second thing that hit me is that we're gonna be able to provide this product, but we're gonna be able to do it in a way that we're gonna use our staff, we're gonna use our people to just make it a little bit more exciting as sure. Our immersion, our water sports program has. Yeah, I know. I saw at the back, and uh, it's not even real, fully realized because you you have spaces for all the zodiacs you'll use when you eventually get down to Antarctica. But meanwhile, you have a a, a wonderful speedboat out there. You said I think you can even go water skiing. Whatever. We we are planning some fun events. We have the high speed water ski. We have of course jet skis, wave runners as they were, and we have in addition to that just regular water sports things like snorkeling and and these things are going to be fun. In addition to your normal, for example, Greek island touring, you're gonna to get to see the things that people normally wanna see in the islands, but you're also gonna to get to spend time out in the bay off these elegant islands, enjoying yourself in the water. Well, that's great, and and also the accommodations I got to tell you are really spectacular. The, the it's very comfortable, very easy to. I've been I've been, I've been on the ship now a few days now, and 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 we we've, we've done a few days at sea, and it's really I'm very comfortable. I don't think I want to leave. Can I just stay for a while? You could stay. We you could stay, but we're not going to pay you. So <laughs> <laughs> we are going to go ahead and enjoy the accommodations. Are spacious. We've had great response on them, but not only spacious, but elegantly appointed. I mean, right. I'm sure you've experienced our sheets by now with a much higher thread count that you normally find in the industry. Yeah, I can feel that. It's really, and, and the pillows too. The pillows, exactly. And, and those things are all serving to make the guests feel like they are in that intimate, elegant boutique hotel. Those things combined with the food program we have, which is clearly well curated, and people are enjoying the th meals, but they're also enjoying the snacking, which is great over at the Paula's Pantry, which is an excellent concept of our little cafe within a, in a hotel is being very popular, more popular, quite frankly, than we even expected. So we're already looking at expanding the seating to try to get more space for people in there to enjoy their quick grab and go or their well, I've been known to go down there about four o'clock because, you know, if I don't eat every four hours on a cruise ship, suddenly there's a rumbling in the stomach. And I said, wait a minute, dinner's not till eight. It's five. OK, I'm going to the, the snack bar. Right? And, and we're finding that you can get everything from a, a grab and go or you can go up and have a hamburger at the grill at seven aft. Or, of course, you can come down to the main dining room where people are enjoying typical gourmet food so there's such a variety of things and like you said every four hours you can hit it you can get something in, of any variety here no it's great now how would you suggest travel advisors our viewers here really sell this ship and sell its different differences 
We are the ship for that client who is looking for a luxurious adventure, but in a more relaxed, intimate atmosphere. Mm -hmm. We are about engaging between the guests. We are about bringing people together in, in almost an egalitarian environment where people are here for the elegance, mm -hmm. but they're also here for some fun. Uh, you've seen up in the Dome Lounge where, you know, we want to bring people together with the piano player or we want to go ahead and have activities outside. And so we are that client. Sometimes people say younger, but I, I don't want to say younger. I want to say maybe young at heart. Right. People who are not worried about, for example, formal nights or these sorts of things. It's, it's going to be a much more relaxed environment. Look at it like a country club in the afternoon mm -hmm. where you're going to be able to walk around in, in shorts and relaxed clothing. But it's a person who has cruised. We have a lot of experienced cruisers on board, but they kind of want to step their game up. Right. Perhaps this is the person who was in a top suite of a contemporary cruise ship and they want to come here now and have the fine things, but they want to do it in a more intimate atmosphere. I mean, we're a small ship we only carry approximately 190 guests. Mm. And now with the restrictions upon us, we're really sailing with about 130, 150 people. Mm. So it's a very comfortable, again, club-like atmosphere. Now, um, what do you see as your advantages over some of your competitors? Because obviously the expedition, even the expedition luxury space, a lot of people have entered it. You, you decided to enter it last year. But what would you tell our travel advisors about to tell their customers about what you have that maybe the others don't have or not to the same degree? A lot of expedition ships are so expedition focused mm -hmm. that when they're, for example, down in the Antarctic, the day is completely surrounded around your tour, your expedition talk, and then the ship closes its doors at about eight o'clock at night. That's not our bent. We are including still those evening activities, entertainment, fun events, so that the person has a more well-rounded cruise. Mm -hmm. Yes, we are an expedition ship with all the elements that you're going to want, including a wonderful expedition team. But the guests are also going to be able to have some lighthearted fun in one of our public spaces, whether it be with an entertainer or a lecturer or, again, up in the Dome Lounge, where it's kind of already proven to be the center of an activity in the evening. Sure. No, it has definitely, it's the center, and we're in the Atlas uh, Lounge here, and it's beautifully well-appointed, and, and, and then behind us was a theater where they were showing a film last night. I thought about going, why not? Uh, you know, uh, this is a different kind of cruise, because this is kind of the shakedown cruise. Uh, all of the, own, the owner, uh, uh, Mario Fajira, and his friends and relatives so, and, and investors uh, on board, uh, but it's still been a fantastic cruise. The, crew, the crew has been great. It's been a great chance to, as you say, shake down the ship. And that's the benefit of all of our oncoming guests as we embark in Athens soon. Yeah. Now, one of the things I wanted to ask you was obviously over the past year, uh, you started, I remember when I met, we met, and you end up having to launch this line and oversee this line during a pandemic. Uh, what were the challenges you faced and how did you overcome them? Well, there were many challenges, many more than we expected, quite frankly. And the best thing for us during the pandemic was it gave us a chance to pace ourselves. Mm -hmm. However, the big challenge was this ship should have been running about six weeks ago. So pushing back on the schedule was a challenge, but also the challenge was continuously reevaluating our itineraries based upon the We're demand. doing that now almost we yeah. are every day. We are, and that's why we've ultimately ended up here in the Greek islands. But even that, we're doing it with a bit of an atlas flair, and we are taking a ship down into Egypt, into Cairo. And the reason that's important, we're going to be the first ship that returns to Egypt since the pandemic. And that's sticking with our kind of our ethos of, let's just take it to that next step. Let's give our guests something that's maybe just a little unique that's not out in the market right now. We're looking forward to that. Well, I know the Egypt is going to be fantastic. I know you went around trying to figure out what your first cruises would be and where we'd start. I know we looked at the Black Sea. We looked at, which I, I love, it'd be amazing, and someday you may go there. Uh, but to start in Egypt, you looked at Israel, um, uh, you know, and then to come back up to Greece is really a good starting point because it, it's going to get you back in uh, in some destinations that are both popular and then more exotic like Egypt because very few people have cruised out of Egypt. We're fortunate. Uh, we're a small company, so we're nimble. We were able to make our changes quick, yet still be attractive to guests, and we're having very good occupancies in these first cruises. 
And what we've done in, for example, the Greek islands, yes, we're going to enjoy the traditional Greek islands, but we're also going to take some time to go to some smaller islands, again, to exercise our fun with those uh, water sports activities. And so that's great. And then when we transit westward across the uh, Mediterranean, we're full. We are already full from when we leave Greece to the time we get over to Barbados. We, we've been selling really well. And, and actually, that's where you're going to have your christening event is Barbados, right? Correct. We're going to have a little bit of an activity there. Right. We're going to be sending out uh, invitations to some of our agent friends and opening it up to the agent community, which is going to be a great event. And then we've also added in after that a, a nice golf cruise, a nice Caribbean golf cruise to, to enjoy before we head down to Antarctica. And then that's one of the great things about it. Everybody thinks about expedition cruising and we're going to Antarctica, we're doing a Northwest Passage or Northeast Passage, but you're doing a lot of other destinations as you call your, your kind of warm weather destinations versus the cold. And I think, you know, there is expeditions to be had that you can have expeditions to a lot of places in the world, right? That's correct. And the reason is, is we've come up with this concept of Lux Adventure. We love expedition cruising and that's adventurous but there are other adventures to have out there. Mm -hmm. And that's why we select unique itineraries, unique ports so that we can have adventures in these unique locations, still provide our Lux experience, and then carry on to other expedition cruising uh, locations. No, and that's fantastic. I'm looking forward to that. Now, let's get, let's let's talk about Antarctica too, because you do have a lot of competitors going down there, and everybody's, you know, it's sort of everybody's sort of similar. But what is going to be your difference down there? Well, our major difference, a main difference, before we even get to Antarctica, is how we get our guests to Antarctica. We've chosen to use charter aircraft to take our guests directly from the United States down to the departure port. That's important because if anyone... What is that departure port now? Right now it's going to be Ushuaia. Ushuaia, which is untraditional. We're, we're dealing with the restrictions that the Argentine government's putting into Ushuaia, and those things have to be dealt with like we've been dealing with all the other restrictions around the world. And what we're able to do for anyone who's ever tried to fly to Ushuaia, it's a cumbersome flight combination. Uh, oftentimes delaying, or not delaying, having connections of 12 to 24 hours when you get down to the, to the South American uh, changing ports, the transition ports. But what we're looking at is we're avoiding all that. We're taking a charter aircraft from the United States straight down to Ushuaia. That in and of itself saves a day for the person's travel time. Right. Then when we get down to Antarctica, our expedition team is looking to take us a little further afield, a little bit uh, more fun, but unique experiences. For example, other people camp in Antarctica. Where when we camp in Antarctica on the overnight, which is an extremely popular selection, we're doing it without tents, doing it in uh, holes in the ice so that the person is truly under the stars. And it's done in a way that of course is safe but because our expedition I'm not going to sink in the ice right <laughs> <laughs> well you know it's because our expedition leader is quite experienced right. uh what he's done is he said no 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 there's this whole other way to sleep in the snow that we don't need to use tents which is fantastic experience you're literally under the stars wow. that's one example and then of course the show snowshoeing expeditions out to the rock i'm sorry out to the ice glaciers and such is very exciting and and that we're not you know there's no additional charge for that that's included so that when you get ashore you can choose to go a little further afield or of course enjoy the sights around you which are fantastic we are also going to choose we're also choosing to visit perhaps a lot more of the small locations mm. get some extra touring in during the day and then again as we mentioned at night open it up a little bit have a little bit more fun at night so that the guests really can experience both the onboard luxury and of course the shore adventure and expedition it sounds wonderful of course then of course you have your trek to the pole you know it'll be what 30 days to get to the south pole or something like that <laughs> and and maybe you'll make it maybe you won't but th we won't talk about that excursion that's to come right <laughs> <laughs> well you know we have a lot of things planned in fact uh some of the things we're going to be doing in the future is uh we are going to be doing other parts of antarctica mm -hmm. you know people are familiar with the with the peninsula because it is so close to south america we're actually going to be coming to antarctica for some different directions we're looking at coming to Antarctica from New Zealand, which brings okay. us to a completely different part of the continent. So yes, we are looking for some unique and uh, different experiences, ways to get there. A lot to explore, a lot to go with an expedition ship. Now, are you still on track with your growth plans now? Uh, you have this ship coming out, and I think you have four more after this, right? Correct, and we are on track. In fact, we're slightly ahead. Our second ship, the Traveler, is very far along. 
-hmm. So we're actually going to probably launch that a couple months early. And when will that be roughly? We're looking at a June time frame for 22. Okay. And then just behind that is the seeker. The seeker is already being laid. There are many blocks in the yard. So the seeker will also be coming out early in 23. And then in 23, we're looking at late 23, having our uh, next ship, and then we're not going to be until 24 for our fifth ship. Mm -hmm. So yes, we're, we're hitting right along. And That's only in three years, five ships. That's amazing. It is, and we're very fortunate. Mystic Invest, which owns us, mm -hmm. has been fantastic in taking care of our needs. In fact, it's great that we're owned by a large holding so that we didn't experience some of the financial issues that other cruise lines mm -hmm. did. It's been good in keeping us strong, but it's also been good in keeping us on track to develop as we had planned. The great thing is, as we expand the fleet, we're expanding our destinations, we're expanding our reach around the world. Mm -hmm. And so look for us eventually getting into world cruising. Uh, we're going to have a ship over in Asia and the eastern part of Russia and, and going up to Korea, up to the Russian peninsulas. So we are going to be everywhere very soon. Sounds great. It sounds amazing. I'll be looking. F we'll be watching your growth uh, closely uh, as, as we have since the beginning. Because uh, I know when you you originally launched this, and obviously we're in the middle of a, a pandemic. I'm like, how is this going to work? Well, here we are. We're we're here. It's a it's a real ship. It's it's a beautiful ship, and uh, I can't wait to get going to see it in action with all of these expeditions. Is is there anything else that you want to tell our travel advisors out there about? the new ship, World Navigator, and about Atlas Ocean Voyage? Well, Atlas is the new guy on the block. We admit that, but there is a lot of good things. There are a lot of good things that come from being the new guy. Mm -hmm. The biggest one we're finding is that we're attracting people who want to try something different in the luxury space. We're getting a lot of new to cruise people because we are out there advertising in some unique locations. And so we're getting people who are going to their travel advisors and saying, hey, you know, instead of taking that trip out to the ski lodge, why don't I take this trip mm -hmm. down to Antarctica? Because this whole air included thing is a big attraction okay. because our pricing is still competitive with our competitors, yet you get a little bit more. It's also attractive to the travel agents because right now the advisors can enjoy during the first year a lot of good uh, industry rates because we want to get advisors on board. Mm -hmm. We have a large group of advisors coming in our next cruise because we need to get the word out. So right. that's that's something that we are here to help them. We're helping them not just in commission structure and all those things, but also in helping them sell our product and engage with us. Well, they're looking for a great product to sell as we emerge from the pandemic. And I think you, you can have it right here uh, with Atlas Ocean Voyages and right here on World Navigator. First of all, Alberto, I want to thank you for hosting us on board uh, on this Shakedown cruise. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, I've been trying to shake it down, but it's like, <laughs> we'll see what happens. And uh, uh, we're looking forward to watching you grow in the future. And again, congratulations on this brand new ship. Thank you so much, James. And, and thank you to everyone who's going to support us. We look forward to having you on board. I'm James Schillinglaw and this is Insider Travel Report.